The world today runs on semiconductors. All tech applications from missile systems to e-payment gateways to the screen you're looking at now, they rely on chips. Now, this vital component is produced by just a handful of companies, most of them located in East Asia. Taiwan alone makes some 70% of the world's semiconductors and more than 90% of the highest-end ones. A chip is a grid of millions of or billions of data transistors carved into a silicon wafer using extremely precise means. Today, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, stands alone in its ability to pack the highest number of transistors onto wafer surfaces. Some six decades ago, when the world's first chip was invented, it carried just four transistors. Today, the TSMC-made processor, used in Apple's latest iPhone, for example, boasts more than 16 billion transistors. Now, the firm recently also produced what's been hailed as the world's most powerful chip, NVIDIA's Blackwell 200, which features a whopping 208 billion transistors. A Taiwan extraordinary chip success has been driven by its mastery of volume. In other words, Taiwanese manufacturing is incredibly efficient. Observers say its secret to success can be boiled down to these attributes, foresight, dedication and talent. Now, in the 1970s, the Taiwanese government made strategic investments in the semiconductor sector to capitalize on the surging chip demand. Top engineers, cutting-edge technology were recruited worldwide to pioneer advancements in chip manufacturing. Institutions were established and heavily invested in to foster domestic talents and ensure the long-term sustainability of the sector. As Taiwan's chip prowess becomes increasingly vital to the global economy, so does the level of risk. It confronts both the US and China are competing to have bigger control over this crucial component. The self-ruled island is increasingly finding itself entangled in the power struggles of the two superpowers and risks being manipulated as a pawn in their geopolitical rivalry. Now, the survival of TSMC, the world's largest contract chip maker, has been extensively discussed in recent years as countries grow increasingly concerned about a military conflict in the Taiwan Strait. But a potential Chinese invasion is not the only challenge facing the company. Before we take a deep dive into the issue, CNA's Fang Hao Chao produced this look at the story behind the rise of TSMC and Taiwan's semiconductor industry. The Chinese term Hu Guo Shen Shan, which means the sacred mountain that protects Taiwan, first emerged in social media chatters a decade ago. Netizens use the term to describe the island's unique mountainous terrain that acts as a protective shield when a typhoon hits. In recent years, it was often used to describe the significance of Taiwan's semiconductor industry. Danny Ron was a financial reporter at Taiwan's central news agency between 1993 and 2006. During his stint at the government-run news outlet, he followed the development of Taiwan's semiconductors industry closely and witnessed the rise of TSMC as a global chip giant. Taiwan是在背景是正好要从这个我们过去从农业到整个制造业哦，然后到整个科技业要发展哈。那当时的李国鼎呢，就是总统府的资政哈，他就邀请了呃张忠谋，好从美国回来。然后他曾经邀请过
As the longest-serving economics and finance official in the island's history, the late Li Guoting was hailed as the father of Taiwan's economic miracle in the 1980s. That Li Guoting is a very strong, uh, hard-working and hard-working officer. Basically, he is a very skilled economist. And at that time, the government's skilled economists, like Li Guoting, were not very many. They 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 were not very many. 官场上要求财的，也不是要求官会的，而是他们在官场上面就是要帮助国家发展，哈，甚至他们自己家里面，呃，屋顶还在漏水，哈，这是李国鼎他家里的一个故事，哈，他的家里面呢，下雨的时候屋顶还是会漏水下来。With Lee's full support, Maurice Chang set up TSMC and pioneered the pure play foundry business model in Taiwan. Born in Ningbo, Zhejiang Province in China, Mr. Chang followed his family to the United States in 1949. He joined Texas Instruments in 1958, and over the next 25 years, he rose to be vice chairman. In 1985, two years after he lost the race to be the CEO, Mr. Chang finally set his sights on Taiwan. 毕竟美国整个半导体发展的规模啊，包括它整个发展的呃前景啊，在那时候看起来都是很无限远大的。我我想，呃，任何一个人在美国半导体产业有一个立足之地，哦，尤其你是华人，你应该不会想到到台湾来草创一个半导体公司吧？好，那我想，呃，在这样的一个环境面向，张忠谋就凸显出他这个人格特质哈，他是非常鲜明的，也就是说，他是具备开创性，而且他是具备前瞻眼光的一个人。So visionary was Mr. Chang that TSMC is today the economic pillar of Taiwan and the world. 那台积电呢？呃，整个营收一年大概是两兆多新台币，所以呢，如果就营收跟台湾的 GDP 比的话，那大概也差不多是十分之一。所以也就一家台积电，虽然说那它全世界雇佣的这个员工只有五万人，但是它所创造出来的产值是非常惊人，它对台湾的影响跟整个台湾经济的发展是非常扮演关键的重要角色。所以，呃，大家把它形成是形容成是一个护国神山，我觉得并不并不为过了哈。那那您刚问到说，是不是台湾也可以打造另外一个护国神山哈？类似像台积电这样的角色，我觉得是不容易的啊，因为你要形塑出来这么大的一家全世界级的一个巨擘啊，那我们现在放眼任何产业，恐怕都找不到。After three decades at the helm, Maurice Chang retired in 2018. Since his retirement, his role of chairman and CEO has been split between company veterans Mark Liu and C.C. Wei. Mr. Liu is set to retire in June with Mr. Wei named to succeed him. When Mr. Wei takes on both roles, TSMC will return to having a unitary leadership position and he will have his work cut out for him, with rivals such as South Korea tech giant Samsung waiting in the wings to dislodge his company. For more, let's bring in our Taipei correspondent Victoria Jin, as well as Lee Sui Hua, Professor of Leadership and Organization Development at Taiwan's National Chengchi University. He is also former Vice President of Human Resources at Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC. Uh, welcome to the show, both of you. Um, first to Professor Lee, Morris Chang, they call him what, the tech king of uh, Taiwan. Uh, when you look back at uh, his leadership style, what was it that built TSMC to what it is today? Well, I, I would describe him as a very strong leader, but I think uh, more importantly, I think he's a very holistic leader uh, that, uh, you know, uh, provided, uh, you know, from vision, strategy, to uh, you know, building up the systems and processes, the culture, uh, and everything else. But if I would do a single out, you know, a couple of most uh, important uh, 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 contribution he made to uh, make TSMC what it is today, I think one is that he uh, right from the beginning uh, uh, set very high aspiration and standard for the company as a world class company to provide. Um, um, uh, cheap manufacturing services 
uh, with premium quality and premium services, and even more importantly, with premium pricing, uh, which uh, I think uh, uh, sort of sets uh, the tone for how the company evolved uh, today. Another thing that I think uh, uh, he uh, contributed a lot uh, is that he had created over the years uh, the uh, ecosystems uh, for TSMC's uh, continuing success, both internally and externally. Internally, uh, including the system, the process, the culture, the people. Externally, the supply chain, the partnership with the other uh, suppliers, uh, uh, so this is a very, very uh, unique uh, contribution he made. Uh, indeed. Now, now, Professor Lee, you heard our reporter there talk about the transition from a duo to a unitary leadership. Uh, give us some insight into the thinking behind this leadership uh, transition and what does it tell us about the company's future growth as well as future direction? Well, I think, first of all, Dual leadership uh, uh, is not common, right? So uh, uh, I would say that moving uh, on to uh, or back to uh, uh, unitary leadership uh, will be uh, more normal, I would say, uh, especially within the Asian cultural context. Dual leadership is actually uh, even more difficult than to, to uh, practice uh, in the Western uh, culture. Mm. So when you have uh, a chairman and a CEO both don't uh, work together, uh, 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 you, you, you always worry about stepping onto each other's toes. You have to always tiptoe around each other. So I think uh, it is amazing that uh, in the last six years, uh, Mark Liu and CC Wei uh, had uh, achieved so much uh, I think uh, uh, to many people's surprise, uh, for sure, when when it first started. So I, I think it's a wonderful six year. They have mm. uh, uh, put up a very nice show with great results. Uh, so it is, it is time to move on to a more uh, normal uh, way of uh, unitary uh, leadership, I think. Yeah, we can look at that uh, in a little bit. But Victoria, come and join us in, in the conversation now because I want to talk about the timing of it. Uh, the change comes at a time when the chip giant is pursuing overseas expansion in Japan, Germany, the US, and all that's to meet increasing demand in chips. Um, does it, though, call into question TSMC's uh, commitment to Taiwan itself? Yes, its recent expansion has already raised concerns about whether or not TSMC is going to move its core production overseas. But TSMC officials deny such speculation, saying that um, they plan to keep um, at least 80 to 90 percent of its production in Taiwan and also is going to maintain its uh, research and development base in Taiwan. Uh, but analysts are saying that uh, with the uh, geopolitical tension rising, uh, that is going to speed up TSMC uh, overseas expansion plan, and that it, it's going to be a matter of time before TSMC uh, migrate its core t technology elsewhere. Well, the same question to you, Professor Lee, because as some fear that this diversification moves to de-risk the supply chain will um, actually dilute the competitiveness of TSMC as a company as a whole. Well, I, I think first of all, TSMC has uh, grown to uh, its uh, you know uh, humongous size uh, today. Uh, it is it is uh, natural uh, for the company to uh, diversify its locations ge geographically, even if it is without the uh, uh, geopolitical uh, 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 factor. Uh, so I think the geopolitical factor sort of speeds up and uh, uh, give a push. Uh, for this to happen, uh, and and I think this is uh, is not necessarily a bad thing in the long run for TSMC to eventually grow up and uh, become a global player. Uh, it is already a global player in terms of uh, the the market yeah. it serves, uh, but in terms of its manufacturing base, and is is too much concentrated uh, in Taiwan. Yeah. So I think it's a good thing that TSMC get out and learn 
how to operate uh, in different uh, 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 countries and different cultures. Uh, this is part of the growing up process, I believe. Yeah. Uh, after all, this is a, 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 a industry that demands a lot of land, a lot of water, a lot yeah. of electricity. So TSMC uh, is actually facing a lot of uh, limitation in its growth uh, within Taiwan. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I am I'm optimistic uh, uh, about the fact that it is uh, moving overseas. And I think that does not mean that it is uh, uh, decreasing its commitment to Taiwan. As long as its uh, headquarters continue to remain in Taiwan and as long as its uh, call R&D and call uh, uh, manufacturing facilities understand. and know how in Taiwan. I understand. Uh, let, let's bring uh, Victoria in. Uh, some people are calling uh, Victoria TSMC the, the sacred mountain that uh, protects the view uh, of um, possible military conflict in the Taiwan Strait. Uh, Vic, what is your view on this kind of thinking? Will the US protect Taiwan because in some ways of TSMC? Well, there is definitely an increasing chance of the U.S. come to Taiwan's aid if China attacks because it needs, it relies heavily on Taiwanese chips. Um, but, um, but the, the U.S. is actually TSMC's largest uh, market, uh, it, which accounts for more than 50 percent of its uh, market share. Uh, so, uh, it, it, it is in the U.S. interest to maintain peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. But keep in mind that the U.S. is catching up very quickly um, because uh, it has passed the Chips and Science Act in 2022, uh, which would encourage uh, more investment in its local chip manufacturing. And also with, with the... Um, with the uh, three new fabs that the U um, TSMC has committed to build in the U.S., it's going to help reduce reliance on uh, Taiwanese chips. So under the circumstances, uh, analysts are saying that if the U.S. builds its own uh, technology ecosystem, there is likely to be less incentives for the U.S. to come to Taiwan's defense if China attacks. Now, Professor, I have a question for you. Will, Taiwan, uh, will China's reliance on Taiwanese chips prevent a war or cause one? And what kind of measures have TSMC um, taken should China aggression increase? Well, I, I mean, I don't think uh, from China's perspective, uh, TSMC is like one of the top two or three uh, key factors to consider. Uh, if uh, if it is to uh, make the decision of military uh, uh, invasion. Uh, I think uh, it is very clear that uh, in the event of any war would have happened uh, in the island, uh, definitely is to nobody's interest. I think China will suffer, uh, Taiwan will suffer, and the rest of the world will suffer. So uh, I, I, I don't really think that China would take uh, that uh, into consideration. In fact, I think uh, the U.S. has got uh, a lot more interest to protect uh, Taiwan, uh, given that uh, its reliance on the, uh, uh, the uh, chips supplied by TSMC. All right, we, we leave it there for now. I want to thank you both very much. My thanks first to uh, Professor Lee Suihat, Huat, Professor of Leadership and Organization Development at Taiwan National Zhengxi University, and of course to our very own Victoria Jen.